Well, ladies and gentlemen, if some people are worrying about what artificial intelligence could do to the planet, others are still very much worried about what humans are doing. For example, the rise of the radical right in Europe. Now, if the far right movement in Europe needed a boost, Dutch politician Geert Wilders' recent poll results in the Netherlands has done just that. Geert Wilders led his PVV party to the first position, the single largest party, if you like, in the Dutch parliament. 37 seats and about 23.7% of the vote or thereabouts. Now, 37 seats, still well short of the halfway mark. But in Dutch politics, there's normally a coalition government of some sort that is always put together. And that might well happen if he is able to get enough support. But the fact that he's become the single largest party, by the way, that's a jump of 20 seats from last time, uh, 20 up from 17 to 37. So it's actually quite a startling result out there. And it's raised many eyebrows. Why? Well, you see, Wilders is a bit of a controversial figure. He is known for his aggressive anti-Islam and anti-EU rhetoric. And now with Gate Wilders' victory, the populist far-right movement has been brought to the mainstream in Europe. As Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban put it, the winds of change have arrived. And we need to see what this means for Europe. And for more on that, we're now being joined by Volker Stansel, who's the former German ambassador to China and to Japan. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, Mr. Stansel. Just wanted to get your sense of what's going to happen in Netherlands now that no, Geert uh, 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 Wilders has got this sort of a majority. Yes, thank you for the invitation. Now, I think what's happening in uh, the Netherlands is a signal of greater dangers to come, to come to Europe. And for those in the world who care uh, about uh, peace in the world, and not only in Europe, I think this is something to be concerned about as well. Why is that the case? Because we see not only a long time drift towards the right, uh, which uh, has um, a very clear anti-migration um, element in it, but we now see with um, the victory of uh, Gerd Wilders in uh, the Netherlands, that this might turn into something that is anti-Islamic, not just anti-Islamist as he used to be and as he used to build his career on, but in a wider sense. And that, of course, has to do with 7th of October, because he has always warned that Islam is a totalitarian ideology, as he called it, not a religion. Um, and now people see what happened on 7th of October. And many of uh, his voters obviously thought he told us so. So something has to be done about it. One extreme would be to do the gate builder sort of a thing and saying ban all immigration, ban everything, throw them all out of the country, which is tougher to do. A less extreme version would to be to say, all right, obviously you have to have, have migrants, but let's try and control the radicalism even among the migrants and let's make sure people aren't coming in just to game the system and to live off welfare, but are actually contributing members to society. That would be the other way of looking at it. Uh, uh, perhaps a more sensible way. You're quite right. Two points. One is uh, the Netherlands themselves. And uh, there we have a short-term problem, I think, because most of the remedies proposed by Gerd Wilders are totally illegal, according to Dutch law or according to uh, European uh, standards. So as he needs uh, to build a coalition, he will not find a coalition partner if he insists on something like the Nexit, the Netherlands exit of the European Union, and to uh, uh, bulwark all the borders of uh, uh, the Netherlands to not allow anybody in who's not uh, the right to come into the country. That will not be possible. So that's the short term uh, problem, the Netherlands, which I think will turn out to be not as uh, grave as it seems at the mo moment. But as a whole, you're quite right that uh, this problem has to be dealt with. Now the European Union tries to do that by developing uh, ideas on how to deal with the people who come from mainly Northern Africa into Europe or via Turkey into Europe, uh, which countries are still ready uh, to give them asylum, who is controlling whether they have the right to uh, 
require asylum. Right. And well, how do we pay for all that? So, as I said, in Brussels, people are thinking about uh, strategies, how to deal with it. And I think the European uh, Parliament will argue about that in the few weeks and months to come. Very much impressed by what happened in the Netherlands. All right, uh, uh, Mr. Walker, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome.